kombucha, kombucha, kombucha. Today we make our SCOBY. In this video, I want to teach you step by step just how easy it is to make your own kombucha SCOBY right at home. Why do you need to do that? Well, first of all, it's super easy. In seven to 10 days, you're ready to go. You don't need to pay $8 for something in the mail and then not sure if it's gonna work. It's just so easy. Why not do it in your own home and start from scratch? So let's get started. It's simple. We just need tea, sugar, some kind of kombucha starter, which is usually just a couple cups of a kombucha that you have in your fridge. I really prefer this one. It's called GT's Original. That's really the best one. It's super fermented and it works really, really well. And of course, just water. So you can do it on the pot and you're gonna bring the water to an almost boil and that's what we're gonna do now. So let's get started. You're gonna need four cups of water and as always, I recommend distilled or filtered water and not tap water, please. Don't make kombucha with fluoride in it. That's no good. So we're gonna start with four cups of water. Now, what I do as a shortcut, I don't boil it on the stove. I just boil my kettle and put my tea bags right in here. But in case you don't have a kettle, we're gonna do it the long way here. So while we're waiting for that to boil, let's answer the question of what kind of tea. There's people who use green tea and some that use black tea. Sometimes people use both and other teas. I highly recommend black tea. It just seems to work better and it's definitely more consistent. And get an organic tea because tea is one of those products, you know, they use the leaves and when they're spraying pesticide right on the leaves, you're gonna get that into your body. So tea is one of those foods I highly recommend to buy organic. I buy this brand because the tea has a really nice flavor, but I love that the tea bags are also healthy and compostable for the environment and for me. So now our water is boiled. I turned off the stove and now I'm just going to add these to the pot. So just like any tea, you need to let it steep for five or six minutes, but while it's hot, we need to get that sugar in there. Now you want to give it a whisk around and make sure that sugar's all melted. The sugar is the food for the bacteria that's gonna grow when we set the tea out. The great thing, even though we're adding a third of a cup of sugar, the bacteria is gonna eat most of that. And in the end, when we drink our kombucha, when it's finally done, it's a low sugar drink. And now we're gonna pour our tea into our gallon glass jar. gonna need two of these gallon jars because one of them which is this one we're gonna keep always to keep our scobies in because a scoby always has to stay sitting in a tea mixture like this so it has a piece of linen and a rubber band to cover the top and it comes with the top the ones I bought and I'll leave the link below it comes with all of this it's just easy so I highly recommend that you're gonna need some bottles, but not for today, because today we're just making the SCOBY. But since you're gonna order maybe these jars, then go ahead and get six of these bottles. These are the 16 ounce bottles. They make them in smaller. I don't like them bigger than that because if you have a carbonation and then the bottle's too big, it loses it before you drink. So 16 ounces is perfect for me. I let it cool about four or six hours and if it's still warm then don't start the next step because you really need this to be room temperature because this has all kinds of cultured probiotics in it and they're going to die if you put them in to a hot tea so we're going to open this now this is gt's original it's so delicious this brand they make so many great flavors but i try just the original one just to keep it basic to make our our SCOBY starter. And now we're gonna add this. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna stir that around. It's so easy, you guys. In seven to 10 days, you're gonna have a SCOBY. Now, most important is to cover it. You don't wanna get junk floating in there and you don't wanna put this lid in because it needs to breathe a little. So we're gonna just put this on and a nice little rubber band around it and then I like to pull it tight 
just to make sure it's on right. And that's it. The ideal temperature, even when you're doing sourdough bread and you're using a starter or any fermented vegetables, anytime you're trying to do fermentation, you want to try to get a temperature around 65 to 75. That's really ideal. You can just put it in a closet somewhere and let it, let it be and come check it in seven days. If your house is hotter than that, then it's going to happen much faster. Try to find a cool spot in your house that's in that temperature range. And if your house is colder than that, they sell some things you can wrap around your jars to help keep it warm. You can just buy a thermometer like this and when you open it up, it'll tell you. Let's check it right now. 73.6, perfect. So in about seven to 10 days when my SCOBY is formed, then I'm gonna show you it and tell you what to do next. So it's been 14 days now since my tea has been fermenting and you can see that it's grown a nice scoby. Do you see that? See it floating around in the top. Now remember, we made this from scratch. We didn't buy a scoby and put it in. We made it totally from scratch. That's why I decided to leave it 14 days because I wanted a nice, thick, substantial one. Could have stopped the fermentation on day eight, nine, or 10, it was ready, but I wanted to get it a little thicker. The longer you leave it, the better your SCOBY gets, but the more vinegar-like your tea will become. And after I made this, I decided to do an experiment. I wanted to order an already formed SCOBY and some starter tea and have it go side by side and see which one was better. So I ordered this online. You can see it has a SCOBY in it and the fluid here is called the starter tea or the fermented tea. So I ordered this, it's about eight bucks and three or four days later, I think it was four days later, I got it and I made the black tea the same way, the three bags and the same amount of tea. Only I didn't use my GTS kombucha original flavor for the starter. I used the liquid in the tea as my starter tea. And that's all I did different. I put their SCOBY in, the starter tea, put the lid on and it's been sitting right there on my fridge. And this is now 10 days and this one is 14 days. And the fact that this tea had an already SCOBY in it, of course it was gonna ferment faster. So it took four days less, that's all. So it's about $8 to do it this way and four days less. And you, so you save a little money doing it this way, but it takes a few more days. Before I go, I want to taste it. Mmm, that one's ready to go. That's perfect. So in this fermented tea, I want to show you that the SCOBY that I purchased is on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to show you. The one that grew was the one on the top, and the SCOBY always grows to the width of your container. So if you were doing it in a smaller container, it would be narrow. You can see this one was made completely from scratch and it's the width of my jar. So now we're gonna fish out the old one. This is the one that I bought. Do you see it's this size? And I'm gonna put that in my SCOBY hotel. I'm gonna put it under the bottom there and keep this nice one on the top that I grew. I decided to use this SCOBY for my next batch of kombucha because I like the idea that I'm using one from the bacteria and yeast in my house. So now I'm gonna show you how to make your very own first batch of delicious kombucha. So be sure to stay with me. I'll see you there.